going on folks do y'all own a jeep liberty and are having some problems with it overheating well i'm going to show you some of the stuff that you can look for and show you what i found with my jeep liberty and why it was overheating but i am going to cover some of the other things you can look up video on how to do that stuff but when you see this you're going to go man i feel so stupid if this is your problem much like this guy did my name's Clay and you're watching the Clayway. This is Clay with Clay's AC and Auto Repair and Accurate Engines here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And if this video is helpful, please consider subscribing, clicking the notifications, sharing my videos and giving me them sweet old thumbs up. And if this video is helpful at nighttime while you're sleeping, put on your computer, turn the old volume down and put on one of my sweet Clayway playlists. Remember, if anyone else can do it, I promise you you can do it too. Don't be the next to them, be the first to you. Let's get going with this problem that we got today. Okay, so we've got a 2006 Jeep Liberty. It doesn't matter if yours looks the same as this, it's gonna be fairly the same with the exception you might have a fan down here instead of an electric fan. But for the most part, stuff is gonna be the same. The reservoir might be in a different spot, but just pay attention to what I'm talking about because I'm gonna cover a couple different things. If you're overheating, you want to make sure that you pull your oil check level stick. Make sure there's no water inside your engine. If there is water inside your engine, more than likely you have a cracked head or a bad head gasket. Thank God that's not the situation in this particular situation because we already remanufactured these cylinder heads. And I'm going to put a picture up there in the corner. They came out super excellent. But even after we put it back together, we still had a problem. And I'm gonna show you what that problem was and how old Clayboy made a mistake and I ended up learning something at the same time. There's other things that you can do. You can take a digital thermometer. They sell these down at Harbor Freight Tools. You can get one of these real cheap and you can check the temperature of the hoses. Anyways, in my situation, I had a hot hose here and a cooler hose down there, meaning that this was like 150 degrees and that was like room temperature or 100 degrees, 110 degrees. There should only be a variance of approximately 30 to 40 degrees between the two. And if there's a big variance, you're gonna find out that the same problem that I had is probably the problem that you have, either have a defective thermostat or it's not installed properly, which is gonna be this situation. You're gonna go look at that thermostat and you're gonna go, how can I install this thing improperly? Well, I'm gonna show you when I get to that part. Another thing you could do is you could remove the cooling fan here and you could take your temperature gun with the vehicle up to operating temperature and you could check to see that your radiator is cooling properly. Obviously, if you have a big difference between side to side, technically up and down, you've probably got a plugged radiator that's plugged up with crap or in the front of here it gets a lot of dirt and debris and things like that you can take a power washer staying about this far away from it and clean that out that'll also help with your air conditioning working a little bit better as well so to recap one of the biggest issues if you're thinking that you have a bad head gasket is you're going to have water inside your oil that's a bad thing on your cap right here you might find a bunch of condensation, white looking oil on the top of there. That'll also be a good sign of it. Bad head gasket. The other thing is you could have a defective water pump. That's generally not the case. If the water pump's not leaking, it generally will not be the water pump. It'll be something else like your thermostat. Now let's say on the inside of your vehicle, your heater's not cooling correctly or you don't have enough hot air. You can check the temperature of this with the temperature gun and the other hose up here on the firewall and see what the variance is between the two of them. If there's a huge variance, that means that your heater core is plugged and you can attempt to flush that out, things of that nature. But also in this video, we're gonna show you how to burp out this system or at least the way that we do it here and I'll explain to you the way the manufacturer describes on doing it. First thing I'm gonna do, because I know it's a problem, is I'm gonna put a thermostat in here and I'm gonna show you how to install this thermostat and the way it's supposed to go and the clocking that's on it. So these are bitch clamp pliers and the reason that they're called that is, well, 
if it isn't already obvious. But if you don't have them, you can use a pair of needle nose pliers or some pliers or whatever. And we would remove this one down here. Luckily, I replaced mine with a hose clamp so I don't have to mess with these. We want to make sure that we have a catch pan underneath there to catch any falling coolant. Now there's two eight millimeter bolts on the top of the thermostat housing that are very easy to remove with an extension. And from this position, one is approximately at the 12 o'clock position and one is almost at the six o'clock position on the housing itself. You may be interested to know exactly how this functions. Inside this barrel right here, there's wax. And as the wax melts and it melts at a particular temperature, it pushes down on this spring, allowing this center portion to lower down and open up and allow coolant to travel past it. This is where your temperature sensor portion of it is. As the coolant heats up that little silver rod right there, it transmits that energy into the wax, melting the wax, allowing this to open. It's kind of neat, but it's also the reason that most of the time these thermostats don't fail as well. And is the reason that it makes it nearly impossible for them to fail unless something mechanical in here like the spring brakes or the housing itself, but really neither one of them should actually happen. Okay, so when working on these Jeep Liberty 3.7s, 4.7s, it is important, even though it doesn't say it anywhere, that this is facing upward. What this does is it allows air to travel past this so you can burp out the system and get all the air out of there. If you do not have this in the proper clocking, it will make this hose really hot and that hose really cold. <laughs> and your vehicle will overheat after a little while does take about 15 to 20 minutes if you have it down at this position down here for it to overheat but it will overheat it will constantly get hotter and hotter and hotter and that's because there's air trapped inside the system air is bad for a heating and cooling system if air is trapped inside here that means there's a void and that's often the reason that sometimes you're hot your air is coming out hot out of your vents and then other times it's coming out cold when you have your heater turned on it's because you have air trapped in your system so we're going to install this the proper way and i've kind of got it marked this little black mark is for my little notch right there and then this goes right here on this line right here which will face it straight up when the housing is installed the housing gets installed basically like this so this bolt is clocked at about the 11 o'clock position. It's actually probably like an 1130 position because it's pretty darn near 12 o'clock. When you install this properly and you have the thermostat installed properly, you should not have any odor overheating issues unless you have another problem inside your system like your head gaskets or a defective water pump because they do sell these water pumps with a plastic panel and a metal panel. I highly recommend just putting on the metal one. It'll save you some grief and you'll know that that panel is not burned off of that water pump. We're now gonna go over and remove the upper radiator hose and this overflow hose isn't necessary to remove, but it does make it easier to get on the clamp. So I removed my overflow hose just to make it easier to get on this one. I collapse this and bring it back. Okay, so these engines are made of cast iron. I highly recommend you taking off the top radiator hose on the driver's side, taking a water hose, putting it right down through the radiator hose, and rinsing out the engine prior to installing your thermostat. That'll help knock out some of that scale and rust that has accumulated over the years inside your engine. Now with the funnel inserted in there, we can fill up the coolant so it fills the engine first and then we'll reinsert our hose back on there and fill our coolant mark up to there. Then we'll start driving it and working the air bubbles through the system. This is an eight millimeter Allen wrench. This thing is extremely tight. And if you do not use the proper Allen wrench for it, you will strip that out and create yourself a lot, a lot of issues. 
Now, during the fill procedure of this, you wanna make sure that you open this up and pay attention to the threads there that I've got showing. You wanna fill it up till stuff just starts to bubble out while you're filling that. That way it pushes that air out of that system and you don't have any vapor locking. Now we're gonna put our thermostat cap back on of our reservoir and we're gonna drive it around several times, probably put, you know, five, 10 miles on it. We're gonna double check it, make sure it's not overheating and fill it when necessary. I'm certain it's gonna need a little bit more once it starts pushing that air up. It pushes the air over to this side of the bottle, which is what that tube is for right there. And there should almost never be coolant in this side. This is if it overheats right here, just so you folks know. Okay, so we start the vehicle up and we wanna make sure that our temperature setting is on high. We turn it all the way up with full fan speed. It doesn't really matter where the indicator's at, but we'll go ahead and throw her up to defrost and we let it come up to operating temperature. Once it comes up to operating temperature, we wanna check the ground underneath it, make sure it's in a dry spot and make sure that there's no coolant leaking out of it. So we're gonna monitor our coolant temperature sensor, which is right around 147 right now. We're gonna watch this and it should get up to about 195 degrees and then the thermostat should open. The cooling fan should come on at approximately 203, but in this vehicle's particular situation, I've had it come on at 213. But we also had a problem with air inside, trapped inside the system. So now that we believe we've alleviated that, we shouldn't have any issues. So we're gonna watch this, drive it around a little bit, then we're gonna add a little bit of coolant as necessary. So now that we've driven the vehicle and we know it's up to operating temperature, we can tap on this if you can't see through it and we can see that it's taken in all of our coolant. So we're gonna need to refill it with a little bit more coolant. We can also check our hoses, make sure this one's hot. Be careful, it could be super hot, but this is up to almost 200 degrees and it's just fine for me to touch. And this one seems exactly the way it's supposed to. So we wanna make sure that we fill this up to coolant and that hose gets pretty darn close to the same temperature as that one. So, trying to help bleed the air out of this, you're gonna wanna grab down on this hose and squeeze it just like this, doing the same with your other arm. And in my situation would be my right and my left. But luckily I don't have three arms, so I can't show you me doing it, but squeeze them both at the same time. That will force air back up into this line and force it past this thermostat opening that little rivet that's inside there allowing it to push through if your jeep has the electric fan like mine and you don't have to worry about contacting moving parts you can do this while it's running it does make it a little bit easier to burp that air out of there okay so let's say for instance you can't seem to get that lower radiator hose to allow coolant to flow through it. I don't know what situation this could be useful for, but you could take a 1 8 drill bit and drill approximately three holes inside here, out the outside portion of this thermostat, and that will allow coolant to escape past the thermostat itself, allowing you to burp it out easier and still have heat and still have coolant movement, allowing that air to escape out of there might be necessary if you had a small head gasket leak or something like that or a crack in your block god forbid having a couple of holes in this probably won't hurt anything it will still go up to operating temperature and work properly okay i did allow it to cool down a little bit because i want to make sure that my reservoir is filled up the way it's supposed to be but i look right here i have 147 148 and about 126 so there's a 15 to 20 degree difference between the two hoses which is the way it should be with that done and all of this other stuff hopefully you're not overheating and you have good heat in your car like you're supposed to if you have short patches of heat where sometimes you have heat and sometimes you don't it's cold make sure that that reservoir is filled properly add a little bit more coolant to it until it comes up to the line right about there and make sure you're good so hopefully
hopefully that video was helpful for you. You're not overheating any longer and you've got good heat in your car. Remember, don't be the next to them, be the first to you. And if anyone else can do it, I promise you, you can too. If you've got a question for me, you can hit me up on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook Messenger. I'll certainly try to answer them for absolutely free. Please consider subscribing, clicking the notifications, and sharing my videos, and giving me them sweet old thumbs up. God bless, and have the best of days.